How's it going, everybody? And thank you for joining me on Out of the Boat Throws for Scatterbrain Saturday. Uh, I went ahead and decided, because I was going to be looking at this lawnmower anyways, that I'd kind of give you guys a rundown on uh, how to diagnose some of it. So this one specifically uh, is a Honda HRR 216K9VKAA. Um, it's just like a 21-inch uh, self-propelled lawnmower and it's not starting for whatever reason. Some of the most common causes for that are going to be no spark, uh, bad fuel, because you wanna keep uh, your fuel probably around 30 days unless you're using a, a stabilizer in it. And then within the machine, you probably wanna run it out if you're gonna be letting it sit for longer than a week. Uh, just to make sure you don't foul the carburetor, which is gonna be another reason that uh, your tool won't start or runs a little bit weird is because you have a faulty carburetor. For whatever reason, it's either failed, the jets are leaking, or they're clogged, uh, or it's become corroded from uh, stale fuel, which is gonna separate and allow it to rust. Because um, a lot of the newer fuels actually has ethylene in it, and the ethylene actually separates from the gasoline itself and then uh, develops water and starts to absorb the water from the air. Uh, so that kind of creates a situation where you have moisture inside of your fuel system. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go ahead and for this video show you guys how to quickly test the spark on it. Uh, you can use a spark tester which helps you a little bit better especially if you're doing it by yourself um, because you can actually set it up so that you can ground it out on certain places so you can view it from the back of the machine. Um, but since I actually have somebody here who can help me pull the full start and hold the bar, I can actually go ahead and just work up front here and just see the spark without having to put a spark tester on here. Uh, so in order to do this, you're going to need to remove the spark plug. So on this unit here, it does take a 13 16 to remove it and then just a socket wrench. Go ahead and remove the spark plug boot and the wire there and go ahead and remove this. Now you don't want to use power tools on this because it's aluminum uh, and you're going to strip it extremely fast, especially because usually the um, spark plugs are made out of a harder metal. Okay, then you're gonna go ahead and just reattach this. And this is the part where if you did have one person, you would be very difficult for you to see this. Uh, but since I do have somebody else to help me, I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera and then I'll have them go ahead and uh, set it up so they can hold down the bar and pull the cord. And now you wanna go ahead and ground this out so that you can actually see if there's a spark on it. So as you see there, it does have spark. So in that case, we'd go on to further diagnosing the tool. Um, it did actually look like there was fresh gas within the tank, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the carburetor itself is fresh gas. Um, so the next step would be actually checking that. Um, I'll go into a separate video on actually how to test the carburetor to make sure that that might be the problem and um, as well to see whether or not the carburetor can be fixed or it's just completely faulty. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach the spark plug and the spark plug boot back to this. Uh, I'll go ahead and record that and show you guys just quickly because you're just reversing this um, the way you took it out. But you do want to make sure you slightly snug it all the way down and make sure it's kind of tight but don't over tighten it because you can break it. Um, and then you want to be careful not to cross thread because in that situation, you'll actually strip the threading within the head here, and um, that's gonna allow compression gas to pass through, and then you can actually lose compression in the cylinder. And on an engine like this, if you end up doing that, you're gonna end up having to replace the short block or throw the whole thing away, depending on how uh, much time you wanna spend on the machine. So we'll go ahead and show you guys how to reattach that, uh, and then we'll go ahead and finish the video. So you're going to have to remove this again. 
and then reattach the socket wrench here. And you want to start usually hand tightening it just to make sure you're getting the threads in there right. And if you feel any resistance, don't force it. That's when you actually know you're cross threading. So just go ahead and make sure you can just easily snug this down with your fingers. Usually you can go all the way down to where the top of the, um, the head there is actually beginning to hit the washer that's usually on these spark plugs. And then once you get to that point, you'll go ahead and then use the ratchet to tighten it down. Now this is a pretty big ratchet, so I don't want to put too much force on here. Just to the point where it no longer wants to turn on its own. That's probably good right there. And then you'll reattach the spark plug boot. And that's all finished, so you've gone ahead and checked at least the uh, spark plug for spark, and you know the ignition system is at least working on this machine. Um, the next situation, actually, while you have the spark plug removed, you could have checked compression, but I'm going to go ahead and save that for further videos as well. But since at that point you already have the spark plug removed, that's usually the best point to do it. Uh, so that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video here. I hope you guys kind of learned something. You can do this on any small engine that has like a single cylinder. You can technically do it on pretty much anything where you can remove the spark plug boot and check the spark plug. Uh, but on larger engines, it's a little bit more uh, difficult to get done. Um, so if you do have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave those in the comment section. If you guys did find this video uh, informational, go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to go ahead and continue diagnosing this tool. And then we'll upload some further videos on the carburetor system and checking compression and everything like that. So I go, uh, hope you guys had a good one and I'll be getting back with you guys next week.